Number 43, a standard rocket problem. An ice sled powered by a rocket engine starts from rest and accelerates until the engine is shut down. Being on a frictionless icy surface, the sled then continues moving at a constant speed. We've got three variables to solve for, and that means we're going to need at least three equations. This comes as no surprise because this is a two-part problem. Part one, at a constant acceleration, and part two, a completely different set of equations for constant velocity. Part one is when the sled is traveling at a constant acceleration. We know the initial velocity is zero. We know the acceleration that's given by the problem. And we know we're given time t1. Part two is at a constant velocity. The initial velocity in part two when the sled coasts off, is going to be the final velocity at the end of part one. We're going to need to figure out how fast the sled is going. Well, that should be easy enough. Check direction. Everything's in the forward direction. There's no initial velocity. So our final velocity here is going to be our known acceleration times t1. That means our initial velocity here, when we coast away, is now known. And we know the acceleration. This is constant velocity here. Now, let's check in with how far this sled has gone. Our change in displacement in the x direction is going to be vit. Oh, we don't need that. That's 0 plus 1 half a t1 squared, which is going to be half of 13 t squared. And that's the distance traveled in the first half as we go forward. In the second half, we're going to be coasting. We start with initial velocity, also going forward. Now we have t2, the time we coast for, and Hey, that's right, we're coasting. No acceleration. Now let's substitute in and see how far we've gone. This is where the physics ends and the algebra begins. We've got two pieces of information that are given about our totals. We have the total time is 90 seconds. And we have the total change in displacement is 5.3 kilometers. This means we can get rid of T2 entirely. T2 is simply whatever was left of the 90 seconds that T1 didn't take. Substitute this up here, and we've got a nice merged equation. First leg of the journey, second leg of the journey, check in with the first one, check in with the second one, and solve. This is the kind of quadratic equation that you can put straight into the end solver on your calculator or any other quadratic formula program that you have written. In math class, you'd write it this way. And your calculator, when you solve, gives you 2 times 4.65 seconds and 175 seconds, which is very clearly way too late. This gives you T1 is 4.65 seconds. T2 is the remaining 85.4 seconds. And V as per above is 13 t1, about 60.4 meters per second. Notice how helpful it is to do the problem in two parts, where you have two sets of data and two different sets of equations, one for a constant acceleration and one for zero acceleration.